Jay Z was born Sean Corey Carter in Brooklyn, New York on December 4th, 1969. He was the youngest of four children born to Gloria and Adnes. But at the age of 11, his parents divorced, leaving Gloria to raise the four children on her own. Left with no father figure to look up to, Jay would eventually look to the streets to find his manlyhood. Raised in Brooklyn's infamous Marcy housing projects during the height of the crack era, a time when almost everyone was either using or selling crack cocaine, it wouldn't be long until Jay would stumble his way into dealing himself. But Jay had a gift. Since an early age, he had a fascination with words, often finding himself poring over the dictionary to learn as many new words as possible. After watching an early freestyle rap battle outside the projects he lived, Jay made up his mind that he would make rapping his new hustle. Pairing with the fellow Brooklyn rapper Jazz O, Sean Carter would soon start rapping under the moniker Jay-Z, short for Jazzy and an ode to a subway route that ran through his neighborhood. Based off the buzz they had built in the streets, Jazz O would eventually strike a major record deal with EMI Records. It was the highest paid deal given to a hip hop artist in the 1980s. Jazz would take his partner in rhyme, Jay Z, along with him. But after Jazz's deal failed to catapult them to superstardom and witnessing the shady workings of the record business, Jay was discouraged by the music biz and returned to the streets to hustle. His friends would tell him that he was wasting his time in the streets and that he should continue to take rap seriously, but Jay wasn't hearing it. He was making too much money hustling, more money than most rappers with major deals, and he had grown weary of the music industry after witnessing Jazz's deal go belly up. Eventually, his good friend DJ Clark Kent convinced Jay to give rap another shot. In the early 1990s, he was introduced to a local promoter named Damon Dash from Harlem. Dash would become Jay's manager. Dash shopped Jay's demo to every record label imaginable, but executives couldn't see the potential in the young Brooklynite or his manager's vision. So Jay did what any real power player would do. He decided to carve out his own route in the music game. Together with Dame Dash and business partner Biggs, Jay co-founded Rockefeller Records in 1994. We found at Rockefeller, we started out the trunks of our cars. Like, I was bringing records to Brooklyn getting $300, literally. They also paid for music videos and promotion themselves and would encourage DJs to play Jay's music in clubs by sending gift baskets, which included a copy of a single and an expensive bottle of champagne. Eventually, the team's hard work would pay off. And in 1996, Rockefeller struck a deal with Priority Records to release and distribute Jay's debut album, reasonable doubt. Although only marginally successful commercially, the album was considered an instant classic by the hip hop community and solidified Jay's fan base and credibility as a serious player in the music industry. In 1997, Rockefeller would part ways with Priority and partner with hip hop powerhouse label Def Jam Records to release Jay's sophomore album In My Lifetime Volume 1. Although receiving some criticism for Jay's slight departure from the more grimy image of Reasonable Doubt for a more commercial appeal, In My Lifetime was a success, being certified platinum for shipping over 1 million copies in the United States, encouraging Jay to quickly hit the studio to record his next album. In 1998, Jay-Z released his third album, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, on Def Jam Records. This will become Jay's highest selling album to date with over 5 million units sold. Hard Knock Life spawned five hit singles, including the title track, which sampled the classic kiddie musical Annie, giving Jay-Z serious crossover appeal. Hard Knock Life made Jay-Z a household name and will put his career on a trajectory that remains unmatched. Over the years, Jay will release hit song after hit song and a string of critically acclaimed and commercially successful albums, establishing him as an icon in popular music. He would also venture into a number of lucrative business deals, including his own signature shoe line with Reebok, opening a chain of 4040 clubs, and much, much more. In 1999, Jay and his partners Dame and Big started their own line of clothing, Rockaware. In 2007, Jay would sell his stake in Rockaware for a reported $204 million. In 2003, Jay-Z would buy a stake in the then New Jersey Nets and would be influential in moving the Nets to Brooklyn, where he now owns a piece of the Nets arena. In 2004, Jay's business savvy would land him the position of president of Def Jam Records, 
a position he held until 2008. As president, he would discover and develop major artists such as Rihanna, Rick Ross, Neo, and Young Jeezy. After taking a brief retirement from rap, Jay would release two more albums under Def Jam, and in 2008, he parted ways with the company as both president and artist to sign a $150 million deal with Live Nation. The deal would allow him to release albums and start a new record company, Rock Nation. But Jay didn't stop there. After releasing the Blueprint 3 in 2009, Jay became the only solo artist in history to have 11 consecutive number one albums in a row. In 2013, Jay inked a new mega deal with Universal Music Group to distribute albums released on Rock Nation. He also sold his stake in the Brooklyn Nets in order to become a sports agent and start a new sports management company, Rock Sports. How did this kid from the Marcy Projects in Brooklyn grow into the iconic artist slash businessman who now has a net worth reported at $500 million and has become one of the most powerful people in the music industry today? Jay's real power comes not from his money, his fame, or even the spoils of his illustrious career. Uh, for me, I think the most important thing is the one to lead by example. Jay's real power comes from his ability to persevere, dust his shoulders off, and keep moving forward, no matter the circumstances. His real power also comes from knowing how to navigate in different environments while remaining true to himself. But these qualities are not unique to Jay-Z. In fact, we all possess these same powers. As Jay has showed us, no matter where you start, no matter where you come from, if you channel those powers into something positive, if you believe in yourself, you can most certainly succeed under any circumstance. What's your real power?